welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrose. Tonight's episode is episode 97, and uh, today... It's Mother's Day, so I want to wish all of you out there a happy Mother's Day. Unless you're listening in the future, well, then I hope you had a great Mother's Day. (laughs) Oh, boy. Full of jokes today. Anyway, today's episode is going to be brought to you by The Bearded Detailer. Head on over to thebeardeddetailer.com. Why? Well, there's lots of good stuff over there. Lots of information on how to keep your vehicles clean, and if you need some products that are made here in the U.S. to keep your vehicle clean... Go ahead on over to the swag store, and when you're done shopping, be sure to use the promo code TOH10 for 10% off your order. Pretty simple. And uh, when you use that promo code, 75% of the profits will be donated right to the Congressional Medal of Honor Society. Pretty simple. Be sure to you pick up a Bearded Detailer shirt and a Tales of Honor podcast shirt. They're both there in the swag store. The Bearded Detailer, where your dirt is his business. And now, a Tale of Honor. Louis J. Sabile was born on the 21st of November, 1915, in Harbor Beach, Michigan. After high school, Louis attended Wayne State University in Detroit and moved to Chicago, Illinois after graduation. He worked in several Chicago nightclubs under the nickname of Lou Reynolds as a master of ceremonies. Two weeks after the attacks on Pearl Harbor, Lou enlisted in the Army Air Corps and began his flight training in January of 1942. There was a desperate need for pilots at the time, so despite being two months over the age cutoff, Lou was allowed to train with a waiver. His outstanding skills as a pilot and a leader was helpful, not only to himself, but to the younger trainees as well. After his training, Lou was commissioned as a second lieutenant and was assigned to the 450th Bombardment Squadron, 322nd Bombardment Group, 3rd Bombardment Wing out of MacDill Field in Florida. He deployed to England in January of 1943 and was part of the first group to fly B-26 Marauder bombers in the European theater. Lou would go on to fly 68 combat missions with 245 combat hours by the end of the war and had been promoted to the temporary rank of Major. He returned to the U.S. with two Distinguished Flying Crosses and 12 Air Medals in March of 1945. After the war, Lou left the Air Force and worked as a commercial airline pilot. The Air Force offered him a commission as a first lieutenant, and he returned to active duty in July of 1946. Lou worked as an instructor pilot for the F-51 Mustang and F-80 Shooting Star and taught other pilots how to transition from conventional fighter aircraft to the newer jet engine models. He was later assigned to the Philippines in 1948, where he was once again promoted to the rank of major, and this time became the commanding officer of the 67th Fighter Bomber Squadron, 18th Fighter Bomber Wing, stationed in Japan. When the Korean War broke out, Lou's unit was sent in support of the UN ground troops, originally for air raids and gathering intelligence of North Korean ground troops. After the Battle of Taejeon, aircraft were repurposed to close air support and airstrikes on the front. By the 5th of August, Lou had acquired over 3,000 hours of flying time in his career, and it was his actions during the Battle of Pusan Perimeter that would earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, Major Sabil distinguished himself by conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. During an attack on a camouflaged area containing a concentration of enemy troops, artillery, and armored vehicles, Major Sabil's F-51 aircraft was severely damaged by an anti-aircraft fire. Although full cognizant of the short period he could remain airborne, he deliberately ignored the possibility of survival by abandoning the aircraft or by crash landing and continued his attack against the enemy forces threatening the security of friendly ground troops. In his determination to inflict maximum damage upon the enemy, Major Sabil again exposed himself to the intense fire of enemy gun batteries and dived on the target to his death. The superior leadership, daring, and selfless devotion to duty which he displayed in the execution of an extremely dangerous mission were an inspiration to both his subordinates and superiors and reflect the highest credit upon himself, 
the U.S. Air Force, and the Armed Forces of the United Nations. Lou had once said, If you have to die, then take some of the enemy with you. Back in his squadron's constant hut in Japan, his actions were not thought of highly with other commanders in Korea. They compared it to the kamikaze actions of the World War II Japanese pilots. Reluctantly, a citation was forwarded to Washington, D.C., and a little over a year later, on the 24th of August, 1961, the Air Force Chief of Staff presented the Medal of Honor to Lou's widow and son at March Air Force Base in California. Lou was the first Air Force member to receive the Medal of Honor for the Korean War, and there would only be three others after him. All four received the Army's Medal of Honor, as the Air Force's Medal of Honor would be first issued during the Vietnam War. Louis J. Sabeel is buried in the Forest Home Cemetery in Forest Park, Illinois. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you so much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast. And if you like this podcast, please be sure to leave a nice review, a good rating, and tell a friend. You can see more information on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and at talesofhonorpodcast.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening. <laughs>